What is up you guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Now I've done enough top 10 videos and like science related videos to know that people are crazy, scientists are crazier, and that for sure some of these diseases that emerge randomly in the world are man-made. No cap, you heard it here first. That's how messed up we are as a species. We take pleasure in creating illnesses that could annihilate all of us. So with that promising introduction, these are the top 10 scary diseases created in a lab. Starting off with number 10 is bird flu. Back in 1977, H5N1 killed 24 people in Hong Kong and since then has only killed about 400 people. And the only reason the death toll is that low is because it's not easily transmissible from human to human. In the few years leading up to 2014, scientists found a way to make bird flu jump from ferrets to humans because screw us, right? They claimed they had to create a transmissible version so they could better understand the disease and prepare vaccines. Seeds. Yes, I know they didn't create bird flu in the lab, but they did create a more infectious version of it, and there's a 20% chance any lab worker could become infected and spread it to others, so why are you all trying to kill us? Why? Coming in at number nine is swine flu. Coronaviruses are just populating these lists these days, aren't they? I've high key just had enough. Either way, the first swine flu pandemic type event happened back in 1918 when pigs started getting sick alongside humans. The disease stayed pretty dormant after that and it had been dead for around 20 years before it suddenly had a very random reemergence in 1977. The new strain that emerged that year was suspiciously very similar to one produced in the 1950s in the lab. After that conclusion was made, it became very obvious that the outbreak in the 70s was due to the faux pas of a lab worker. I'd be so pissed if I contracted swine flu because of some guy in a lab, like it had been dead, let it stay dead, big man. Why are you creating a new strain and unleashing it on the world? Ain't nobody got time for that. And number eight, we have multiple leaks, part one. Now these aren't diseases that were actually created in a lab because honestly, no lab would really confirm they manufactured a deadly disease, because come on, use your brain, people. However, lab workers have made ridiculous mistakes that make me want to punch myself and everyone within a two mile radius of me right in the face. Let's discuss. In 2003, a lab worker in Singapore accidentally infected themselves with SARS. A year later, a Russian scientist stuck herself with a needle contaminated with Ebola and later died as a result. Like, surely these people should be more careful and obviously, I mean, yes, it is sad to hear about anyone dying, but you're also literally putting everyone else at risk who would otherwise be completely healthy. Filling in the seven slot are multiple leaks part two. And so the slew of mistakes just don't end there. They never do. In April of 2014, Paris's Pasteur Institute lost over 2,000 vials that contained within them the SARS virus. The worst of stories was the month before this, a lab in Texas lost a container containing guanarito virus. And do you even know what that virus does? It causes bleeding under the skin in all internal organs and or from your ears, mouth, and eyes. So no, labs are sure as hell not creating these viruses, but they are making some stupid mistakes by losing vials of dangerous and highly infectious diseases. Most of them are contained or dormant, but these leaks can very easily cause new epidemics. Let's not do it. Right? Safety first. Now, number six is smallpox. I feel like the scientific community just doesn't know what to do. Like, on one hand, they want to eliminate diseases altogether, and on the other hand, they keep preserving them to study them further. Like, why can't we just let them die, people? Why are we holding on? Let go. For example, smallpox was eradicated in 1980 because of the vaccine. However, there are still two samples of the disease living in labs. One is in Russia, and the other is in the US. Many people have argued that those vials should be destroyed altogether because they could be used in bioterrorism, and that, my friend, is not good news. There is no real cure for smallpox, and it kills a third of all its victims, so I mean, let's just, let's just not, right? Let's just not do that. Coming in at number five is grayscale. Now I know this one is fictional and if you haven't seen Game of Thrones, that is where it's from. The contagious skin disease makes your flesh harden like stone and discolor into a grayish black color, hence the name. Now at the beginning, it'll start calcifying your skin and then crack and spread. If you get it, you are either killed or cast off and left to die because you bet your ass no one else in Westeros wants that now this hasn't been created in a lab, but the disease was inspired by leprosy and smallpox, and I mean we have both in vials somewhere in the world. A dastardly evil scientist could easily just decide, screw everyone, I hate you all, I want them dead, let's make grayscale a reality. And so be it. 
and number four is Ebola. The disease was first identified in 1976, and between then and 2013, there were 2,387 cases, with over half of them resulting in death. However, in 2014, the biggest Ebola outbreak occurred with more than 9,000 cases and a fatality rate of 53%, which is bloody high. During this time, the US as well as Europe were very confident about the fact the disease would not spread to their regions, despite a case being confirmed in Dallas. Conspiracy theorists believe that the reason they were so confident is because America and Europe had the cure for Ebola, and whatever was happening in Africa was a lab experiment. Others believe a Western country somehow released the disease in Africa in order to cull their population. So it was a West versus East sort of debate, isn't it? I was, obviously, I am obviously an Eastern person. I will always be on the East. Bias. He. <laughs> well, in any case, so is MEV1. So because I very recently watched Contagion, I thought I would include this one too, because boy, oh boy, did it hit way too close to home. In the movie, Gwyneth Paltrow travels to China for a business meeting and comes back sick and dies very quickly after that. She then passes it on to her son, who dies within days as well. Doctors in the movie quickly discover the disease comes from a mix of pig and bat-borne diseases. Now, the disease MEV1 is highly contagious as it's spread by fomites, meaning any surface you can touch. Now, the disease has a 25 to 30 percent mortality rate, and people in quarantine were still dying left, right, and center. It was a lot deadlier than COVID and killed 2.5 million people in the US, as well as 26 million worldwide. To say COVID was created in a lab, who's to say that that wasn't a test before a disease like this is made and unleashed? We are overly populated. Now, number two is the blue virus. In Stephen King's book, The Stand, a battle takes place between good and evil that eventually leads to a disease outbreak. Blue virus, aka TubeNet, kills 99% of the world's population, and you know how it started? It was developed as a biological weapon, hoping it would be nothing more than the common cold. It then mutates after resisting all known medicine and results in a person experiencing delirium, crippling body pain, and eventually death. And we are in the business of biological warfare in this day and age. This is such a real possibility, it's just not even funny. I mean, no one wants to create a disease that ends humanity, and truth is, it just never starts out that way. But if we have things like syphilis and E. coli out here becoming antibiotic resistant, then a new disease like that will have no problem doing the same. And finally, at number one is COVID-19. Now, the biggest conspiracy theory right now is the fact that people think coronavirus was manufactured in a lab. Either the Chinese government unleashed this on their own population to dwindle their numbers, or it truly was a lab accident gone very, very wrong. I personally don't think any government, no matter how many human rights violations they're involved in, are evil enough to want to kill a large part of their own population. On the completely other side of the coin, some skeptics believe that the US manufactured the virus and planted it in China. China orchestrated this whole pandemic in order to villainize the country. Trump has outwardly denounced China in multiple ways, and China being the one that supposedly started this whole pandemic looks really bad on them, which would make him happy. And that is it for today's video, guys. I know diseases are probably not what you want to be hearing about right now. I'm sorry. It is what it is. Sue me. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you guys are just hanging in there in quarantine. Hopefully this will all be done soon. As always, I'm your host, Iman Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.